Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to talk to you about formulating with vitamin A. Now, vitamin A is known as the skin renewal vitamin because it helps accelerate skin renewal. In doing so, though, it can be potentially irritating. In fact, there's only certain forms of vitamin A that are allowed to be used in cosmetics and then within very strict limits. You may know of the pharmaceutical ingredient, tretinoin. Now, this is not allowed in cosmetic products. It's a prohibited substance. So I'm only going to be talking to you today about retinol and retinol palmitate because they are allowed to be used in cosmetics, but again, within very specific limits. Now, retinol palmitate and retinol are both converted to retinoic acid within the skin. And this helps accelerate cell renewal and cell regeneration, which also helps with collagen synthesis and making the skin appear denser and firmer. But there are strict limits, as I mentioned. Now, retinol will more easily be converted to retinoic acid. And retinol palmitate needs to be converted to retinol before it can be converted to retinoic acid and have its benefits in the skin. Here is a summary table showing you the limits of regulation for these substances in the different regions. Now when formulating with vitamin A, not only do you need to observe the regulatory limits, you need to look at the form the product comes in. Now different suppliers will provide you with different concentrations. Here's an example of some of the common forms you might see from suppliers and their relative strengths. So when you're formulating with vitamin A, you need to carefully look at the technical data sheets to make sure you calculate the correct composition and inputs to make sure you stay within the regulatory limits for your region. So now today you're going to see me formulate a simple vitamin A gel cream. This absorbs really easily into the skin, but I'm going to formulate it to help ensure long-term stability. Vitamin A is very susceptible to light and heat. It's also susceptible to strong acids or alkali conditions. So the formula I'll be creating will observe all of these limitations and keep the pH between 6 to 7. That's still fine to use on the skin, but it also avoids the extreme conditions that would otherwise destabilize and rapidly degrade vitamin A. And remember, there's no point adding a cosmeceutical to a product if it's not in a compatible environment because it simply won't work. The other thing you're going to see me add to this formula is an anti-irritant ingredient. Now, when you're formulating with vitamin A, even when you're formulating within regulatory limits, you need to observe the heat and light conditions that vitamin A doesn't like. You need to avoid strong uh, alkalizing, oxidizing or acidifying ingredients. And you should be adding an anti-irritant ingredient because it is a known irritation potential ingredient. So adding an anti-irritant ingredient helps limit or reduce the potential irritancy of users. You'll also see me add quite a lot of antioxidant to this formula to help protect against potential oxidation of vitamin A. This ensures I'm making as compatible a cosmetic environment as possible for the long-term stability of this vitamin. It's a fantastic material to work with because it's especially effective at reversing some of the photo damage created by the sun, enhancing collagen synthesis, reducing fine lines and wrinkles, and smoothing out the skin. But remember, we need to formulate to suit the vitamin and the user to make sure they get the best benefits from the product without any potential irritancy. So now, let's get formulating. Here is an example of the product we're going to be making today. So it's a beautifully glossy gel cream, vitamin A product that absorbs very quickly into the skin when applied. So now, how do we make this? 
I've started by pre-combining the water and propane dial and then I'm going to stir this uh, under low shear and then I'm going to prepare the oil phase which includes our vitamin A and add that to the water phase. Stir until it's homogenous and you've got a nice, smooth, glossy emulsion. And then check and adjust pH. And that's all there is to it when creating a product with vitamin A. Just remember to observe those really important formulation principles. Make sure you add an antioxidant. Make sure you keep that pH relatively neutral and avoid strong oxidizing, alkalizing or acidifying agents. Make sure you add an anti-irritant ingredient to help reduce potential irritancy in the user. And make sure you observe those regulatory limits and check carefully the supplier's documentation to make sure you're calculating the composition of the material you're using to stay within those regulatory limits. Happy formulating!